we find ourselves in the desert. Rumors of nuclear war. Isolation from loved ones. Natural disaster after natural disaster. Violence that causes people to flee their homes. And we ask ourselves, can God set a table in this wilderness? Welcome to the Well St. Timothy's online Sunday service on this, the first Sunday in Lent. Great to be with you as we begin this Lenten journey. Before we worship together, I want to just make two um, announcements. Uh, one is I want to thank you for your generosity in response to our budget matching uh, challenge. We have exceeded the matching funds. Um, your generosity has been extraordinary. I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart and the vestry wants to thank you for supplying the resources necessary for our ministry. And I want to particularly thank those who are part of our online community that quite frankly never are going to probably be at St. Timothy's. They live elsewhere, they're from other states, and uh, each day we just got more manna. The loaves kept multiplying, and thank you so much for, for your generosity. And the second thing I want to share with you is that beginning next Sunday, a little jump, drum roll is required right now, beginning next Sunday, masks will no longer be required in in-person worship. How about that? We'll be able to see each other's faces. Of course, some of you may wish to continue to wear masks, and that's perfectly fine. Um, do what you need to do, but it will no longer be required as these numbers continue to, to decline significantly. And I want to thank you for how conscientious you've been during this whole time. Your, your care for each other, your care for those most at risk in our community has really been a witness to, to God's love. So let us worship God. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose blessed Son was led by the Spirit to be tempted by Satan, come quickly to help us who are assaulted by many temptations. And as you know the weaknesses of each of us, let each one find you mighty to save through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
When you come into the land that the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance to possess, and you possess it and settle in it, you shall take some of the first of all the fruit of the ground, which you harvest from the land that the Lord your God is giving you. And you shall put it in a basket and go to the place that the Lord your God will choose as a dwelling for his name. You shall go to the priest who is in the office at the time and say to him, Today, I declare the Lord your God that I have come into the land that the Lord swore to our ancestors to give us. When the priest takes the basket from your hand and sets it down before the altar of the Lord your God, you shall make this response before the Lord your God. A wandering Aramean was my ancestor. He went down into Egypt and lived there as an alien, few in number. And there he became a great nation, mighty and populous. When the Egyptians treated us harshly and afflicted us by imposing harsh labor on us, we cried to the Lord, the God of our ancestors. The Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction, our toil, and our opposition, oppression. The Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, with a terrifying display of power and with signs of wonder. And he brought us into this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. So now I bring the first of the fruit of the ground that you, O Lord, have given me. You shall set it down before the Lord your God and bow down before the Lord your God. Then you, together with the Levites and the aliens who reside among you, shall celebrate with all the bounty in the Lord your God has given to you in your home. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. The psalm for today is Psalm 91, 1 through 2, and 9 through 16. They who dwell in the shelter of the Most High abide under the shadow of the Almighty. They shall say to God, You are my refuge and my stronghold, my God in whom I put my trust. Because you have made God your refuge and the Most High your habitation, there shall no evil happen to you neither shall any plague come near your dwelling. For God shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. They shall bear you in their hands, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the adder. You shall trample the young lion and the serpent under your feet. Because you are bound to me in love, therefore I will deliver you. I will protect you because you know my name. You shall call upon me and I will answer you. I am with you in trouble. I will rescue you and bring you honor. With long life will I satisfy you and show you my salvation.
The Gospel for today is from the fourth chapter of Luke. After his baptism, Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during those days, and when they were over, he was famished. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command the stone to become a loaf of bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, One does not live by bread alone. Then the devil led him up and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And the devil said to him, to you I will give their glory and all this authority, for it has been given over to me, and I give it to anyone I please. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered him, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to protect you, and on their hands they will bear you up so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, It is said, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every test, he departed from him until an opportune time. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. You know, several years ago, I walked into the church uh, one Sunday morning and had a conversation with someone about things that were going on in his life and challenges. And at the end of the conversation, he said, you know, it's all about trust, isn't it? And I said, yeah, you're, you're darn right. It's all about trust. It's all about each day believing that if we put our trust in God, that we will have what we need. Well, on this first Sunday in Lent, the Spirit takes Jesus out into the wilderness to see where he's gonna put his trust. You know, Jesus has just had a powerful experience at the Jordan, his baptism, this extraordinary calling. Um, but he's not yet begun his ministry. And the wilderness really is this place to discover what is it that's going to make me tick. You know, even Jesus had to discover what was the source of his life. And so in the wilderness, what we have are these temptations to put our trust in another place besides God. You know, the devil says to him, hey, when you begin this ministry, you know what you ought to really do is you ought to turn stones into bread. You know, if you could do that, boy, just think about it. You could help God feed everyone in this world, they would all be satisfied. Wouldn't that be an extraordinary way to go about helping God build the kingdom? But you know, just because you could turn stones into bread doesn't mean there wouldn't still be many inequities. Turning stones into bread doesn't change hearts and minds. It doesn't make people more generous, more hospitable. You know, what will transform the world are people inspired to share what they have 
and to use the resources that God has given us to make sure all are included. Okay, so he's not going to go that route. The devil says to him, listen, if you will worship me, I'm going to give you all the kingdoms of the world, all the political power you want. I mean, that's a temptation, isn't it? Boy, if Jesus were just the one who was in charge, wouldn't everything be better? But you know what Jesus knows is that simply having political power, once again, doesn't mean that the fundamentals of a society have changed. The only thing that's going to fundamentally change a society is that it's made up of people who have put their trust in the one place it should be put. And then finally, the devil says to Jesus, well, listen, what about religious power? I mean, you are a religious figure par excellence. You know, just jump off the pinnacle of the temple. God will, will save you. Everyone will be wowed. Just think of how many people you could get on board with your movement if you were to be that kind of wonder worker. And once again, Jesus knows that this is not what brings fundamental change and transformation. The only thing that brings that kind of transformation is deep trust in God and what it is that God can do for us. You know, I just wonder, of course, I have no way of knowing this. If Jesus in the wilderness was able to respond to these temptations because he was constantly being fed by God's word. You know, when I go off on retreat into a wilderness of sorts, what do I do? I, I go to my favorite passages in the Bible, I go to ones that remind me that all my hope really on God is founded and then putting my trust there is what matters. And you know, I wonder if Jesus was reading Psalm 91 that we heard today, you know. You who live in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty, will say to the Lord, my refuge and my for fortress, my God in whom I trust, could well be that Psalm 91 was coming to mind to him in this time. But, you know, the Bible invites us to imagine what is going on. You know, too often we're just too, too kind of uh, limited in how we view these stories. And what occurred to me today is I wonder if Jesus was reciting a different Psalm. Psalm 136. You know, the way that we learn to trust is, is that God continues to provide for us and continues to provide for us and continues to provide for us. And we each time think, oh gosh, you know, God really will take care of me. You know, I don't need to turn stones into bread. I don't need all the political power in the world, all the religious power in the world. I just need to trust in God. And I wonder if he went to Psalm 136. Psalm 136 is remarkable because it's just one long 26 verse litany about this God whose steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good for his steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods for his steadfast love endures forever. Who alone does great wonders for his steadfast love endures forever. Then it talks about the whole creation being made by this God for his steadfast love endures forever. And then it talks about how he has taken care of Israel when they were under threat. Who struck Egypt through their firstborn for his steadfast love endures forever. Who brought Israel out from among them for his steadfast love endures forever. With a strong hand and outstretched arm for his steadfast love endures forever. And made Israel pass through the midst of it. His steadfast love endures forever and on and on and on and on. And I wonder if Jesus added his own examples of that. 
that he was reminding himself God's steadfast love endures forever. That this tenacious solidarity of God as one theologian translates this word for steadfast love, this tenacious solidarity does not go away. And that tenacious solidarity was with Jesus in the wilderness and was reminding him, it is going to be okay. I am going to provide for you. And when you leave this wilderness and begin your ministry, it's all going to be about trust. You know, today at our 11 o'clock service, we are going to be confirming 20, 21 people making their commitment, some teens, mostly older adults, making their commitment to follow Jesus, to be part of God's mission. And what I hope they're reminded of today is that it's all about trust. It's not about miraculous powers. It's not about razzle-dazzle. It's not about having more political power that what God needs are people like you and me in this church who day in, day out trust. And that as we trust in God to provide, we invite others to trust in God to provide. And this is what over the long haul, undoubtedly the very long haul, will make this the kind of world that God wants. So if you find yourself in the wilderness, this Lent, anxious, wondering what's going to happen given the mess you're in, given the struggles you face. Maybe you have your own litany, like Psalm 136. Maybe you can already remember Oh, at the time God got me out of that mess I was in 10 years ago for his steadfast love endures forever. Oh, that time God provided me new resources because his steadfast love endures forever. Oh, that time that God mended this relationship that had broken down because God's steadfast love endures forever. Maybe it'll be time for you to recite your litany and remember that this Lenten journey and beyond is all about trust. Trust in God. That's what Jesus discovered in the wilderness. May this be our gift this Lent as well.
Dear God, we have now entered the season of Lent. If Lent means self-sacrifice, we have had plenty of that in the last two years. We are ready for salvation from suffering, not eager to take on still more deprivation for the sake of spiritual growth. Lord, help us remember that the Lenten season is meant to deepen our relationship with you. Allow us to see that self-sacrifice is only one tool to help us draw closer to you. We can also seriously commit ourselves to becoming more of the persons you created us to become. As Bishop Smith has suggested, we can commit ourselves to rest and respite and to finding simple joys in everyday life. We might undertake a spiritual practice that will continue to bless us long after this Lenten season ends. We can discover new forms of prayer, extend our giving to your children in need, focus on discovering your presence in everyday events, grant patience and emotional support to people sharing our lives. We pray for your guidance and support in doing any and all of these. Dear God, hear our prayer. We also pray for the following, for all continuing to suffer from the effects of the coronavirus and other disasters. May we provide them with prayers, compassion, and a helping hand for all those assisting others to weather crises with hope and dignity. Let us do what we can to assist your saints in action. For all those suffering from the war in Ukraine, please help leaders find a rapid and lasting solution to this devastating conflict and comfort and support all individuals who have lost loved ones, communities, and their way of life. Send your healing spirit to those on our prayer list, especially Ali Alfieri, Bonnie Stevens, David Dreisbach Sr., Debbie Corotis, Mike Voris, Grace Owens, Patty Carr, Cindy Brandyberry, Essie Adams, Angela Berner, Tom Keller, June Bachman, Alida Schatz, Sayla Maisie Hart, Norma Blatt, Nancy Kess, Lisa Bernheisel, Wendy Jones, Brandon Frerking, Matt Ruddle, those grieving the loss of loved ones and for your own concerns. Mary Peel. For dear departed ones, especially. Grant, O oh God, that your holy and life-giving spirit may so move every heart that barriers which divide us may crumble, suspicions disappear, and hatred cease, that our divisions being healed, we may live in justice and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As we conclude our worship today and make our way out into this world of ours, um, I want to give thanks for those who at our 11 o'clock service this Sunday were confirmed, received, 
and are joining this journey with us. And my prayer for them and for us is that as we move forward like Jesus, we will put our trust in God, knowing that God can do in us infinitely more than we ever dream or imagine. And now let us pray in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and forevermore. Amen. Life is short, and we never have too much time for gladdening the hearts of those who are traveling the dark journey with us. Oh, be swift to love, make haste to be kind. And may the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>